I love working with silk. Silk yarn is not only my favorite fiber to dye, but it's also my favorite fiber to use in my knit or crochet projects. It drapes beautifully. It's suitable for warm or cool weather just because of the properties of the fiber itself. It is just a wonderful year-round fiber that is just amazing. It dyes beautifully and it makes beautiful garments. So I can't say enough about silk yarn. So what you're seeing here is 100% silk. This is a base that I used to carry in my shop, but I no longer do. Sadly to say, as much as I love working with this yarn, it was a lot of work to produce it. So you saw in the previous bit of footage, my husband was helping me as well. And we had to separate the yarn into smaller skeins in order to sell them. Uh, so that entailed unwinding them, uh, weighing them, and then rewinding them into smaller skeins, tying them to get them ready to dye, and that just took a lot of time to do that. So for cost effectiveness, it just didn't make sense to sell that in the shop anymore, just because of the time involved. But boy do I ever did I ever love that yarn it was so beautiful so in the meantime I found a wonderful substitute but this video I filled filmed this about a year ago when I did have this in my shop and I kind of forgot that I had this footage so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to do a video about my favorite fiber and that is silk. So in order to get the yarn ready for dyeing, you've seen me do this in, in quite a few of my videos, I soak the yarn before. Now the thing to keep in mind with silk is that just because of the nature of the fiber, it is very water resistant, which makes sense because there's a little animal that's going to build their cocoon out of this silk and it has to be able to withstand all kinds of weather. So that is a quality that this fiber has. So in order to break it down enough so that the dye will penetrate into it, I need to soak silk yarn or yarn that has a high percentage of silk in it. I have to pre-soak that for quite a bit. So before I arranged it in the pans here, I had soaked this yarn overnight. So at least a minimum of 12 hours, 24 hours is even better. And that's usually what I aim for. As I mentioned, silk takes dye so beautifully. So I'm going to stop talking for a while and over the next few minutes just sit back and relax and uh, just watch as I apply color to this wonderful fiber.
Looking back at, at this video footage has really been nostalgic. As I mentioned, this footage was filmed well over a year ago, probably getting close to two years now, and a lot has changed in the meantime. I'm sure I don't need to talk about the current world situation or what's, you know, the, the effect that it's had on people's lives. I'm not going to get into that, but, you know, all of us have really gone through many changes, some worse than others. So looking back at this, I had no clue about what things were going to transpire. This also has fond memories for me because this die space I no longer have. This was in the basement of my previous home. And shortly after I did this video, we put our house up for sale and we were planning on moving to another country. So because of COVID and other circumstances, those plans changed. So we had to adjust and things have turned out just fine, but it was a big adjustment. So when I'm looking at this, it just brings me such fond memories because this is really where everything started for me as far as my dye, my yarn dyeing business goes. I had a small, tiny space in our home. And the reason why I first started dyeing yarn was because I wanted to have an endless supply of yarn in the colors that I wanted for design work. I was just getting into coming up with my own knitwear pattern designs. I was delving into that. I had knit for years and I was ready to move on. I had ideas for designs that I wanted to create. And one of the big things for me was going into a yarn store and having to settle on colors. There never was quite the color that I was looking for for my projects. So I always had to compromise and kind of settle for second best. It was never quite what, what was in my mind. So I discovered that, you know, it was possible to dye my own yarn. And I thought if I could do that, then not only could I have as much yarn as I wanted, but I could have it in exactly the colors that I was looking for. So I got some books, did some research on the internet and found out all that I could on dyeing yarn. And I just dived right in. Now, little did I know that I would number one, love it so much. I started it just for practical reasons, but I just enjoyed the creative outlet so much of dyeing yarn because really I love art. I love drawing and painting. I've done that all through my life, right from when I was little. So this was just another extension of that. Now, instead of paper or canvas, the yarn became my medium to create artwork on. And I was immediately addicted to it. So I couldn't stop, you know, I just loved it so much. So, you know, before long, I had more yarn than I knew what to do with, which was worrisome to my husband, because he said, like, man, like, you're spending a lot of money and time on this yarn, you're never going to use it. What are your plans? So at this point, I didn't know that there was such a thing as selling hand dyed yarn. I had seen it in in yarn shops, a very, very small amount. And I always was intrigued by this hand dyed yarn. But I didn't quite understand what 
it was all about. I didn't understand how I could use it in projects. It was significantly more costly than regular yarn. And I just didn't really see how practically anyone would use it, even though it was beautiful and it was, and it was, I viewed it as these works of art. So when I started dyeing yarn for myself, I still kind of had that mentality. I didn't really see or understand that there was a market out there for this type of yarn. Again, I was just going, I was just doing it for practical reasons so that I could have the colors that I wanted. And in my mind, <laughs> I pictured having a limitless supply of yarn, which is of course every, you know, every knitters or crafters dream, you know, who, who loves working with yarn. So when I discovered that there are people that are actually making a living or um, using it to sub to supplement their income and that it really was viable. I was like, you know what, I'm going to give that a try. So I talked to my husband about it, gave him all the details. I did a lot of research and he was such a huge support. He was quite skeptical, but I said, you know what, just let me give it a try. Let me give it a year and see how it goes. So now here we are four years later and I'm still going strong with my yarn dyeing business and loving every minute of it. But this here is where it all started. In fact, the area that you're seeing here, my husband made that more efficient for me. As the business started growing, I added a oven that you can see in the background so that I could heat set more yarn at one time than, than I had before. I was using um, stove, what do you call those, hot plates or countertop burners before. But I started with just one little burner and just a little tiny corner of my basement. It was dark, it was dingy, but that's how I got my start. Built it up to this and now I'm working in a totally different space in a new home and in a different area, part of the country as well. So if you're interested in seeing the space that I'm working in now, um, I know that you've seen it in my more recent videos, but I could do a video giving a little bit of a tour of my dye studio as it is currently if you'd be interested. So I dyed quite a bit more silk yarn during this session. So I'm going to save that for part two. You're going to see me dyeing a lot more beautiful silk. And also, I'm going to show you the finished results. So again, thank you so much for watching. I loved going down memory lane and talking about my favorite fiber to dye and work with. So stick around for part two that will be up in the next couple weeks. And again, thank you for watching. Please like and, and share this content if you like. Comment. I love reading your comments. And of course, if you don't want to miss any more of my content that I put out, then subscribe and hit that bell notification too so that you can be notified when I put up new videos. Again, thank you so much for watching and until next time. Bye.